Bonjour! Uh, I am back to the project that I started in 2019, if I remember correctly, and then completely abandoned because I had something else to make and then it just was stuck in a box. But now I feel like digging it out again, I feel like making something working class. But it's not gonna just be a working class outfit, I'm gonna make it the lowest of the low. I wanna... could you not move stuff outside my, outside my window? I want to make something that would be worn by a woman that's like at the bottom of the society. By a street seller that is like all of the clothes she owns are torn, worn and dirty and she's having a hard time. That's who I want to recreate. I feel like it would be interesting to dig into that. And that's it. Let's let's go. Let's go. My outfit is mostly inspired by the Cries of London. The Cries of London were a popular art and print theme within British artists for literal centuries. Basically, they focused on the street sellers and working class people of the streets of London. There are several artists famous for their Cries of London series, but I'm focusing on Paul Sandby and his 1759 series, in particular this print of a young woman with a shrimp basket. First off, let's break down the outfit. Our fictional street seller, let's name her Betty, <laughs> is wearing a pretty typical outfit for most of the working class people. Betty would have worn a long linen shift with puffy or cuffed sleeves and a wide neckline. She would also wear woolen stockings, possibly darned to oblivion, and pretty rough looking heeled leather shoes that are barely held together. These shoes would also most likely be quite all dating a couple of decades back. Like most working women, Betty would be wearing a pair of stays for comfort and modesty. They probably won't be laced too tight and will also be a little run down and reminiscent of early 18th century styles. A lot of working class women wore leather stays, but I don't feel comfortable working with leather, so I made linen stays instead. Depending on Betty's personal style preferences, she might be wearing a padded roll on her hips to get more volume out of her skirts. Then she will be wearing one or multiple petticoats in rather sore conditions and a top skirt. It's also possible that Betty didn't differentiate between petticoats and skirts because they basically look the same and just wore them interchangeably depending on their cleanliness. On top of the petticoat there would be a skirt uh, that according to the art pieces would be pinned up showing a lining. Then protecting the skirt an apron would be worn. For additional modesty and practicality, the neckline would be covered with a fichu or a scarf and the hair would be covered with a cap and maybe a hat that could also be taken off when needed. A lot of women similar to Betty would top this style off with a loose fitted jacket, but it's summer and Betty is just fine with her shift and stays. This video is sponsored by June's Journey. June's Journey is a hidden object mystery game set in the 1920s. The main character, June, is trying to solve a series of different mysteries, but not only that. Apart from searching for vintage objects within beautifully created scenes and sceneries, you can also customize and decorate your own island, you can collect stickers, you can participate in different competitions with your friends because you can form clubs with your friends. There is a lot to do and this is actually what I love about June's Journey is that I get really easily bored when I'm playing games and June's Journey never made me feel bored, <laughs> basically. Like, tell me this game is not the chillest game. Yes, please. Oh my god. Give me the money! So it all sounds like something you're interested in. Follow the link in the description to download June's Journey for free. It's available on Android, iOS and Facebook games, so go do it now. This is the skirt. This is the weird under layer that is showing right here. I'm not entirely sure where it comes from. It looks like it's just an under layer of the skirt pinned up. So, and then this is something also kind of strange. Wait. It's difficult to decipher, but my guess is that the overskirt is lined with this fabric right here and that shows when it's pulled up to avoid destroying it. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm not 100% sure that's the way because it's quite uncommon for 18th century skirts to be lined, but that's what I'm gonna do. Hello! Let's start today by making the skirt. It's super simple. You can follow along. 
you can make your own. Basically, all the measurement you need is the length of the skirt, so you can measure from your waist to the floor or a little bit above it, like depending what length you're going for. And then you're gonna take two pieces of fabric that are 150 centimeters wide. So that will be two yards. And you join the sides together, leaving slits open so that you can then close the skirt when you wear it. Basically, it's quite a simple construction. And then you just pleat it and add a waistband or two waistbands actually, because they need to tie. And yep, that's it. Also, I was thinking, because I'm trying to figure out realistically why the skirt would be lined. And I'm thinking if I was an 18th century peasant, I would line a skirt if it was damaged to the point where it was falling apart it was very fragile at the bottom. That's when I will line it with another fabric to make sure it stays put and it doesn't completely tear apart. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to damage the skirt first and then line it with another piece of fabric. Uh, I think it's genius, personally. <laughs> This project required a lot of weathering the fabrics. I started with the skirt and as you can see, I was trying all kinds of stuff. First, I tried stuff that Betty might have actually used like oil, coffee, bleach and soy sauce on the skirt. I poured tea over it and eventually just dumped the whole thing in tea. But because it was the top layer, I thought it's likely it would have been the least messed up. So I just stopped there. When the fabric was ready, I pleated the waist and sewed in the waist ties, but more importantly, I added a panel of different fabric at the bottom that would be shown when the skirt is pinned up. Now, I'm assuming when the skirt starts disintegrating, Betty bought some scraps of linen and lined the bottom of the skirt, not the whole thing, so that's what I'm doing. But it is also possible that it was like a two-layered skirt. But in this economy, Betty be for real. So while the skirt is marinating, let's move on to the apron. The one on the painting that I'm referring to looks kind of difficult to decipher. Like, is it pulled up? Is it just a short one? But I found a very similar looking outfit by, a, by the same painter where it's clearly a short pleated apron and it even, you can tell the direction of the pleats. So I'm just gonna refer to that when it comes to making that apron. Also, interestingly enough, I feel like the bodice, like the stays, are actually worn over the apron, which means they're also worn over all of the skirt layers. Um, it's difficult to decipher on this one. Uh, and there is some, some sort of knot, but it's definitely the case here. I used a long rectangle and pleated it with the pleats facing inwards, because that's what I saw on one of the paintings. To weather the fabric, I destroyed the edges of the apron with a kitchen knife and tried to wear down the pleats with sandpaper. It seemed to not do much at first, but it is such a good way of making the fabric not look like it's brand new. I wanted to add some strategic stains. The apron is probably the garment Betty used the most in her physical work, so I tried cleaning my hands with it, as she probably would have done after cooking or dealing with the produce that she was selling. But because it wasn't enough, I resorted to paint. Painting the edges and adding more stains really helped with the raggedy and used look of the apron. The only problem was the more I looked at the reference, the more convinced I was the apron is actually full length and just tied up at the waist or tucked into the pocket slit. So that also makes a lot more sense historically. And I had to add another panel to the apron and mess up that panel as well. So basically I had to do double work. <laughs> I used a nice striped linen for the fichu and it's literally just a square folded diagonally. Okay, assuming this would be worn on my neck. Like if I was an 18th century peasant, this would be dirty. 
like this piece that ends on your neck. So I'm gonna try and make it look worn. I dampened the neck area with oil, sprayed the whole fissure with bleach here and there for a discoloration effect, and I also used some soy sauce. This is an easy snack recipe you can try at home and my kids just love it. <laughs> I then used sandpaper to weather the fabric some more and I painted the edges. I made the petticoat the same way I made the skirt. Now when I'm thinking about it, the decorative strip of fabric at the very bottom of the petticoat is probably just the lining showing, similar to the skirt, but it was too late. <laughs> and I just binded the edge of the petticoat with leftover linen, which is totally something Betty could have done if she urgently needed to protect her petticoat and couldn't afford more fabric. The cool thing in making something that a poor person wore is that it was all dictated by practicality and her situation more than fashion, so we can basically justify your sewing choices. Because petticoat is an underlayer, I tried to make the hem look really dusty and muddy because it's basically taking in all the dirt from the streets. The stays that I'm using were the first thing I started making for this project back in 2019. If I remember correctly, because that was a while ago, I used two layers of linen and the Elizabethan stays generator for a pattern. I'll link it in the description. Now, you could argue it's the wrong era, but honestly, with the diagonal placement of the boning, it worked just fine. And it's such an easy project because it's just two layers of fabrics and a single piece. I used rattan to bone the stays, which is a period appropriate thing to do, and it works really well. To bind the stays, I cut by a strips of the striped fichu fabric and just kept binding and binding. To tie a corset, I made my own cord using a lucette, which always makes me feel like a medieval peasant woman. Now, normally I wouldn't have the patience to do this, but we were on a 1500 kilometer road trip, so I had plenty of time and nothing else to do. Lastly, I made the chemise. It's quite a simple pattern made up of mostly squares, so it's a good beginner project if you're looking for something. I kind of forgot to record it though. <laughs> I already had a similar one, but didn't want to destroy it for the project. But guess what? I made this one and I felt bad and I decided to temporarily stain it with something I knew could easily wash off, which was oil and fabric paint which until you iron the fabric is supposed to actually wash off so i also bought a basket for my shrimps and i also bought a cheap paper hat um that was a little unexpected i did not know this is here <laughs> i cut off the crown of the hat and only used the top bit which i stitched to the rest of the hat and then i covered it with paint to make it look more nasty I used blush all over my face because Betty has been in the sun and I put some eyeshadow under my eyes because she probably doesn't sleep too much as well. And I added some dirty spots because let's face it, it's 18th century London and even though Betty probably uses a pot of water to wash her face regularly, she does not have running water to do it during the day and the city is dusty as hell. I tried to recreate the hair that Betty was wearing in the painting and it kind of worked. The only problem was it was really windy when we did the reveal, so it got really messed up, which actually adds to the historical accuracy of a woman that ain't got no time for none of that.
knew I would make it this far. They hated, they never believed me. Yeah, I would never drop the ball. I know I make it look easy. Yeah, Mayweather with the defense. I don't care what a critic got to say. I got him picking up the pieces. Gotta me, you really playing with your life. I'm about to come and run it all back. I'm the new era, about to snap back. You ain't fitting for it because you all cap like. Excuse my disheveled appearance, I just woke up. But to sum up, this was such an interesting project to do because I've never done... I have done 18th century working class before, but it was like the pretty working class. It was, you know, those porcelain figures. It was kind of like that. It was clean clothes. It was fun prints. It was good quality cotton fabrics. I never actually attempted someone that maybe was not that well off and maybe could not afford the best garments. And even worse, just got the worst possible scraps of fabric out there. It kind of felt a little bit like cosplay with all of the weathering that I had to do. But at the same time, it felt a little like experimental archaeology where I had to guess the components of the outfit based on what the character was doing. I kind of liked that a lot. <laughs> like just trying to get to the bottom of why we wore things and the practical solutions that working class people came up with. So. So yeah, definitely might attempt something like that in the future. Maybe let's do 19th century. I don't know. What do you guys think would be interesting? Uh, let me know in the comments. <laughs> no, but for real, this was fun. Also, don't forget to download June's Journey for free. The link is in the description. You forgot about that, didn't you? Because it was a long video, but no, I'm still mentioning it. And yeah, well, bye, I guess.